Many people consider Linux to be difficult. Many people are saying that they would like to switch to Linux, but again, it's just too difficult. Well, this video is going to be a full demonstration of how to get your Linux desktop fully set up for whichever purpose you may have. There will be uh, multiple sections of this video. So yeah, let's go ahead and just get right into it. To start off this demonstration, we will be using Linux Mint. I know it may not be the greatest Linux distribution, but if you are new in, then it may end up being your best option. So you might want to come to this one. I will have the link in the description below. Go to the downloads page and download whichever you wish. There are multiple uh, distributions. This um, here we have the Cinnamon desktop environment, we have the Mate desktop environment, we have the XFC desktop environment. Just look at the image and decide which one you'd like to have your start menu be. That's really the only big difference here that you need to really care about. We have a new version called Edge. Edge is an ISO image that is also available for the Cinnamon edition. Bishop's a newer kernel is able to support the latest hardware chipsets. But we're going to go ahead and be using the Cinnamon Edition. Now, if you choose to do this, you can go ahead and grab that. You can um, get the, the torrent for it, or you can download it directly. I'd recommend Advanced Hosters if you're downloading it directly. But that's what we need there. I'm, of course, using a virtual machine. If you've seen any of my videos on how to exactly... Um, start using Linux, then it, you're probably going to be using VMware if you are testing things. But this is to simulate what you might be doing on an actual machine, okay? But I do highly recommend following along in a virtual machine. Go ahead and check my Linux Mint video. It will be in the description below, and it gives you the full setup for what you'll need on something like VirtualBox. So I currently have a guest for, for um, Linux Mint setup ready to go. I will now power on the virtual machine. Okay, there's an issue. Give me a second. There we go. I got it up, up and running. So you will be brought to a screen like this when you boot into your ISO. Um, I had an issue. I cut off the virtual machine too early when I was getting ready for testing and the running. So I had to rebuild a new VM, but we're good. So we brought here. Yeah, you can use arrow keys to move. None of this really matters. Do not worry. Unless we're going to boot from the local drive, but in this case, there's nothing on it. Although that will most likely be your Windows system if you're running Windows at the current moment. So, we will go ahead and just click Start Linux Mint. And we will give this a minute to fully start up. Give it some time though. This is running on 628 megabytes of RAM. It has a 50 gigabyte um, VDI image drive. And we also give it 6 um, CPU threads. And it starts up perfectly fine. So, with your mouse, we have the Cinnamon DE. So, that's all good and dandy. Now, it's going to be lower, running at a much lower resolution than what you will um, most likely have your display at. But that doesn't really matter because this is only the live environment we have yet to install. So if you want to play around with it, I highly suggest that you don't um, play around in the live environment for too long on a main machine. If you're in a virtual machine, then go right ahead straight to the installation. And that's probably just the best way to do things. So we'll click here, install Linux Mint. And there's pretty basic. Okay, so English will be our language. We'll get that pass through. English US. Um, if you wish to have multimedia codecs installed, you can go ahead and click that. I'll be clicking that just for now. Um, all this here, multimedia codecs are required to play some video formats and probably render some websites. The website part is not entirely true. The video formats, um, again, is not entirely true because you can just install other applications to begin with. But we will go ahead and just click that for now. Continue and go ahead and let those install. Well, it doesn't really install them. What it does, rather, is just set those up. My, my mistake. But it won't make any difference. So we have two options here. Uh, erase disk and install Linux Mint. It, this will delete all your programs. Like means this will completely format your drive. If you wish to partition, you can go to something else. 
and here you can partition your drive, but if you're wanting to go fully into Linux, then hopefully you will have no reason to partition it, and you can just erase the disk. We can install now. So to write all the changes to the disk, we will continue. We have our time zone set up. Now we're going to need our user account, so we'll go ahead and just choose something very, very sim simple. I'll choose sent. I'll choose Sentinel, my username, type in a super secure password. This is not super secure pa password, but it's a virtual machine that I will be deleting either way. You can do this for it to log in automatically, but if you have a passcode, then of course you want to require your password for login. You can also encrypt your home folder. You don't necessarily have to do this, but this is on a laptop, then you definitely want to do this. We will click continue and we will let it install. There's a little slideshow playing. Go ahead and read into that some if you wish, and we'll be right back when it's done installing. So at this point, it has already finished the installation. It might have took a few minutes, but from here you can choose to continue testing the virtual environment, which would be start now. We've installed it, we might as well just restart it now because anything done in the virtual environment will not um, actually be saved. So. No real point in stopping now because we've already installed it. So restart now. And we will just give it a minute to fully restart. It will ask you to remove the installation medium. If you, um, this is good if you want to get directly into the operating system and you have your priority set to um, be on a USB, in which case it will just go straight back into the USB. But I'm in a VM, so I can just press enter. And you can most likely just press enter as well. So, here we go. We have to just give it a little while, just a few seconds. And as we see, Linux Mint is currently right now starting back up. So, there we go. We can type in our passcode, and we're off to the races. Now, it's asking me to check my video drivers because I'm currently um, using a um, KVM adapter. So this is a basic little um, setup box. So your first steps to decide your um, color layout. I'll keep up this for now. You can do dark mode or light theme. You can do the traditional layout on your taskbar or the modern layout. Shut up. There's a lot of stuff you have here. Documentation, latest releases. There's web forms and the ICR chat room, I mean the IRC chat room, and you can contribute to the um, source. So once you're done, you can just click here, show this dialog at startup, have that off, and then you're good. So now, first things first, we have update manager currently going off. And you can go ahead and apply any updates that are available for your system. Let that all go ahead and run through. You want to be on the latest version and everything. Latest kernel, latest packages, latest package manager. Everything should be ready to go. And we have a lot of stuff here, the bash and the Bluetooth, but that doesn't really matter for you. Go ahead and just install the updates. I know I sound like another Windows user, but I'm being honest, updates on Linux are actually quite nice. They don't, you don't even need to necessarily restart your system while this is going. So, in fact, there we go. Once this is done, then we can restart our system because one of the things it is changing is Linux firmware and the Linux kernel. So it will show it installing everything. And that's really it. So we'll be right back when it's done installing the updates. And now it's asking us to go ahead and reboot. So we can do just that, restart. And it will only take a few seconds for it to shut down and then open back up again. And as we see, yes, it should be doing this right now. And there we go. Get the passcode in. And there we go. So, a couple things. First of all, um, set up again. So, there's no updates that are available anymore. 
now you need your drivers installed. So go ahead and go to driver manager, type in your passcode, it's a whole different passcode of mine. And glad y'all could see that. You can go to your driver manager. It's not gonna load anything for me because I'm through a uh, virtual machine adapter, so that's not gonna happen. But for you, if anything shows up, click on the recommended or the latest version. Go ahead. If you're on NVIDIA card, then you are then you're running on um, open source drivers right now. But you might, might might want to click the proprietary drivers for the best performance. Or if you're coming here for the complete Libre experience, then you should be good where you are. But just know that your mileage is going to vary a lot. So if you're on an Intel um, graphical setup or AMD, then go ahead and just check that, and you should be good. So now let's go ahead and go to display we go to display and we're going to pick our resolution mine is 1920 by 1080 16 by 9 i will apply i will keep the configuration go ahead find yours in here and you should be perfectly fine and there's also a lot more settings go ahead and mess around with it if you wish just be careful so here we go we have a fully working desktop now so we have a lot of things here. We have some things installed. It does have a little bit of bloatware in it, but it's not horrible. It has everything you start out with, but let's get on to productivity. So let's say you want to draw. Well, first of all, we're going to uninstall the drawing application because it serves no real purpose. We will uninstall it. Um, there's pics and a document scanner. Firefox web browser is perfectly fine the way it is. LibreOffice, if you wish to use that, I do not blame you. Go ahead and use it if you wish, but I will be uninstalling it because if we want full Office compatibility to literally everything else out there, then we're going to want something else, something a lot different. If you use the Microsoft Office, then you're going to love what I'm fixing to bring up for you. And that, of course, will go into... You don't need to use the command line, but if you wish... You can go ahead and, oh, I'm sorry, Neo, Neo fetch. HTOP is not installed. Um, if you want that, then you can SU into your super user. Oh. Hold on. Give this just a second. It seems to be acting up some. Oh, I forgot. This is not this is a different system so this is not arch there we go so we have that and we can go ahead and just apt inst install htop it will install it for us and there you go you have htop but you don't necessarily need that what you can do is just use the system monitor if you wish. I do prefer HTOP, but this works a lot like Windows Task Manager if you're used to that. So you want to install some packages, huh? You want to get things working, but you don't want to use a command line. I understand if you're new. If you're not new, then I'm disappointed in you. But again, if you were new, we'll go here to Software Manager. Now this has, this is pulling from the um, Debian repository, Ubuntu repository, and the Flatpak repository from Flathub. Flatpaks are pretty nice, but they are canistered, so no, again, your mileage may have some variation. So let's get into productivity. So we replaced the many applications here, so we're going to go to GIMP first for photoshopping or actual name for the uh, image manipulation. This is Another. Let's check. We have two actual versions here. This is the, um, yeah, this is the uh, Debian one, if I'm not wrong. And some people are having some varying mileage on this one, which is why I recommend the one that says straight up GNU image manipulation program. That is the flat pack. Go ahead and install that. And flat packs are canistered applications, kind of like the Ubuntu Snaps, which is why I chose this over Ubuntu because of Snaps. But 
There's a lot of difference between flat packs and snaps. In the end, give me my binaries, give me my app images. But flat packs are not horrible. I use them on my main system. They are actually quite nice for using your operating system in general. They're a really good way of packaging things, even though, again, they do run in a sandbox, so they do have some, mileing, some varying mileage. But besides that, it is currently installing. While it is doing that, we're going to go get something else. You want to start drawing, right? So we have Inkscape for that. Here's the Flathub version. It's a flat pack. We can click that as well. And there you go. You have a drawing application. So if you want to get into 3D modeling, well, depends on your purpose. If you're doing like games and stuff, if you're, you're probably used to this either way because it's become an industry standard. We have Blender. Now we have two versions of this. We have the uh, Debian version and we have the Flatpak version. The Flatpak should be more up to date. So again, click the Flatpak. This is why I like flat, flat packs because generally their repositories are far more up to date than the other ones. I know that the repository management may seem like a downside to Linux, but just know if you're using Blender in Windows, you're going to have to go and get a new version every single time and get a new installation every single time. So don't hate me. Don't hate anything actually here. This makes things a lot easier. So that's installing. So you need your Microsoft Office compatibility, of course. Right here we have only Office. Only Office it is very Windows. MS Office like and it comes with everything you really need well except for databases unfortunately but they should be working on that so that's not too much of a problem and of course this has nothing but positive reviews really some people saying it cannot change the look but that was back in 2020 back when this thing was still in its somewhat infancy and now it has gotten so much better so there is all of that we have everything here we have blender GNU, image manipulation program inkscape we have only office but let's say you're doing cad work and you don't use blender well we have a few options here so there's um, one of the best options a couple of them actually so we have LibreCAD, which is, this is a 2D CAD, this is for like, well, whichever purpose you might have. This guy's saying, meh, I need something 3D. And if you're doing 3D CAD, then I have to recommend Open Source CAD, or Open SCAD, or Open SCAD, I prefer to say. This is a, this is a dev package, Ubuntu dev package. If you wish to install this, go right ahead so that all works now what about gaming right we want to play some games that's a major part because some people say well you can't ha you don't have Photoshop or you don't have MS Office well we have GIMP we have Inkscape we have only Office LibreOffice open office is still being updated don't hate on it it's just has a few older concepts, but OpenOffice is not bad. Don't hate on it, all right? In fact, it should should have the repository here. Nope, they do not, unfortunately. But you can manually install it. I will not show that because it's not really important, though. So I want to do some gaming. One of the first things that is here is Steam. And there we go. This is the Ubuntu version. If you wish to install the flat pack, go right ahead. But they um, they have some variation here, really. So we're going to type in Steam, all right? What I prefer to use is the flat pack. I know, again, that big old canister. It seems to be getting some poor reviews, but I used it back then, and it works perfectly fine. Although, if you do have issues, feel free to go to the Ubuntu version. You can install this and go to work perfectly fine. 
I will install it to show you how to get the gaming parts up on Linux. So that is all good and dandy. While that is installing, let's actually, no, let's look at something else in gaming real quick. So there is a lot of parts here. You have accessories, fonts, games, graphics, internet, office, programming, science education, applications. Um, for programming, you should have already had this done by now. If you're, if you're a programmer, then you probably have some familiarity with Linux to begin with. So that's why I didn't bother going into that part in productivity, because we have pretty much everything you need here, all right? If you want Visual Studio, we do have Visual Studio here. Yeah, Visual Studio should be here, if I am not mistaken. Visual Studio Code, yes. But of course, I prefer VS Codium. If it's here, it's a flat pack. I do prefer that, but you also have Vim too, but that's more of a power user concept there. So what about games, right? Well, there's also a game section, plenty of open source games. There's plenty here, like Nexias, which is a Quake style shooter. We have DOSBox for getting DOS games running. And there's also many, many other games. There's Mind Test, which I am quite a fan of. They will say, out of all the Minecraft clones, this is the best one. If this, you, if you can't afford this, great alternative. And due to some of the newer things that Microsoft has been doing to the Minecraft Java edition, it is probably best to start supporting Mind Test. There's also Open Spades here, if I'm not wrong. And you also have the Minecraft Launcher, if you wish. But we're talking about open source games. So we have Mind Test. We have... Uh, Super Tux Cart. We also, if you want a first person shooter, you did have Nexus, but we also got Open Spades. We also have plenty of strategy games. Now, Steam should be done installing. So, we are going to go right ahead. Missing permissions for input devices. That should be fine, and Steam is setting up its runtime environment. So, I will get on to everything else. Uh, later, but for now, let's go ahead and focus on Steam. Let it go through this stuff, I will be back. At this point, you should be done. It has its really basic stuff. I will go ahead and just click no thanks on the Steam agreements for user survey. Although, if you are on actual hardware, I do suggest you click that to help get us up into the market share some. They don't really collect much, they just collect the uh, basic information like what your hardware is, what OS you run, and that's really it. So, you have all your games, you have everything here, but what about getting the games to work? We have games like Alien Isolation that are native, there's games like Among Us that are not native. I apologize, uh, I, had to, I had to go for a few minutes, but anyway, we are back on. So, let's say you want to play a Windows only game, right? And there are certain games that are best being played through, win through the Windows version either way, like Alien Isolation. So let's say you want to do that. Well, we have a couple options here, but we'll be do uh, doing this for Steam. You go to Steam, go to Settings. Okay. So, go to Shader Precaching, allow background processing for Vulcan shaders. Then go to Steam Play, want to enable Steam Play for all other titles. I recommend Proton Experimental as it is technically the latest version. And of course you have actual releases like Proton 7.3-7.0-3. I'll set up for Proton Experimental. And that must now restart Steam in order to take proper effects of these new changes. And here we go. Now we can just go ahead and log in with no issues whatsoever. It's saying I have Steam um, Steam Remote Play accessible. I'm disabling this VM either way, so by the time this video goes up, don't even try to connect to this in some way. It's just not going to work. So here I can technically stream these games because I have them installed on my main system. But that doesn't really matter. Hold on. Something is taking up resources. 
Uh, yes, it's the fact that all of these CPU cores are also doing something else on my main system. So, that's fine. So anyway, we, um, I can stream these, but you can go ahead and download plenty of games, anything that you have, feel free to download it, and you will not have any issues, or at least you shouldn't. Certain games, such as Player Unknown's Battleground, will not work. So let's say you want to try out these open source games. Well, there are plenty. But let's say you want to play a Windows game that isn't on um, that isn't um, on Steam. Well, you could add it as a non-Steam game. There's also another option, the original option, which actually works very, very well on Debian-based distributions such as Ubuntu and now Linux Mint. Wine. Right there. So, right off the bat, you can install Wine from here. There is Play on Linux, which is okay, but we will go ahead and pick this the Ubuntu release of the Wine Windows API implementation. We will install that, and it will ask us to type in our super secure password, and we can let that go. But you're going to need a front end for the game, correct? So here we have Q4 Wine, and now you can run EXEs in Linux with generally no issue. But if you are on Arch, then it is going to be best to add as a non-Steam game, because Wine on Arch is not all that great. But we are not on Arch, are we? No, we're on a Debian-based, Ubuntu-based technically system, Linux Mint. All of that will now install. I um, I will not be showing a setup for that right now, but there we go. There's also something else I want to show. What about Epic Games? Well, we have the Heroic Games Launcher. Everything um, will generally be right there for you. So, don't worry, you can just go ahead and install this, open it, and everything will be self-explanatory for you. But if you have any questions, feel free to comment them down below. So now that we are off from gaming, what about some other things? What about, shall we say, simply privacy and security. Well, right off the bat, you want to set up your firewall. So, we're going to go ahead and do that. And I have this routed through a uh, proxy, so technically this is not my actual information. There's any information here, which there isn't, thankfully. Turn that on, incoming deny, outgoing allow. And that's how it should be. Yeah, the Firefox web browser. Now, what you want to do is you want to... There's also cosmetics, which I highly recommend having shortcuts and pockets disabled, but that is entirely up to you. So now we want to go into settings, and there we go. We have um, a lot of things here, but let's go ahead and start getting this done as easy as possible. So we have our search. I always access the toolbar. I don't know why, but hey, I might have a reason for it one day. Set your search engine to DuckDuckGo, and if you really want to be smart, get rid of everything except for your bookmarks, tabs, history, and DuckDuckGo. Although nowadays DuckDuckGo is not the greatest in the world, there are other alternatives such as CRX, but this is a very simple step. Set strict, do not track signals, if you wish, delete all cookies and site data, and if you wish, then do not ask to save logins for websites, but I do recommend show alerts about passwords for breached websites. Get rid of the autofill address and credit card. You need to get rid of that. And if you wish, get rid of your history. And there you go. Simple, done, easy. And for the most part, that is it. Now. Let's say you want anything else, you can comment those down below, 
you can ask in the Discord server. Feel free to check out videos from The Mental Outlaw and DistroTube. I specifically do ask though that you would comment down below. That would be much better. Feel free to also like, subscribe if you wish, if you wish to follow up on more content. Let's try to hack the algorithm a little bit. And if you dislike the video, go ahead and dislike it, but I do ask that you tell me why in the comments. If you don't, that just makes you look like a eggplant. Anyway, it's been a nice time. I'm going to go back to my arch system. Have a good rest of your day.